Hello, <laughs> so good to have you here with me today. My name is Roxana Aliva Kazibwe. I'm a people developer in different spheres, entertainment, family, church. Today, I will be speaking to you while wearing my hat as a writing coach. Okay, so a little bit about myself. I'm married to a one Paul Kazibwe. We have a delightful young chap called Jedi Dyer and you guys because you are my friends can call me Roxy so you are writing a book how exciting how thrilling or maybe not yeah I want to thank the Institute so much for having me with you today surely the pleasure is mine thank you so much to the directors at the Institute to you know all the hardworking people at the Fearless Institute. Thank you for having me today. Yes, the pleasure is mine. And hopefully by the end of our time together, the pleasure will be yours too. Okay, let's get right into it. As an alumnus of um, your sister institute back here in Uganda, Harvest Institute, I have a small inkling a small sense of what you might be going through right now. As an author, I feel like a comrade with you all already. And as a writing coach, I am eager to help. So what I've done is craft this session in such a way that it will address specific issues for you as a student at the Institute in regard to your book writing journey. This is based largely on my interactions with the students at Harvest Institute and a few of you fearless souls yeah so there's so much to share concerning book writing but today i am going to focus on three hacks that are going to get you from wherever you are right now in this book writing journey whether you're at idea fairs whether you've already contacted the editor wherever you are to finishing that book okay are you ready for this? Great. I am ready to. <sighs> Let's start with the first and obvious thing. Choosing a topic for your book. Okay? So, some of you might be at the point where you've already chosen a topic and you've gone on and on. But I'll let you know this, that there are friends of yours. Maybe formerly your neighbor in the class. Right now we're meeting online who have no idea about what to write about. So if that's not you, let me talk to your neighbor. You are struggling with choosing a topic. Um, when I was back at the Institute 2017, I think it was 2018, I had a friend of mine and we were discussing, okay, topics, what should I write about, la la la. And so this friend decides that she's going to write a devotional, okay? Um, a devotional, you know, how to, a morning devotional, you know the type. And so I'm excited for, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's something that you can do. Yeah, go ahead and do that. I'm telling you, a few weeks down the road, she comes to me and she's like, she's going to write about irrigation and how it affects rice growers. I am not making this up. This girl knows nothing absolutely nothing about agriculture and here she was saying that she's going to write in the space of time that she had crazy if you have always desired to write a book this part is not difficult for you however if you've never dreamt of this this is a point of pain for you how do you decide a topic there are many ways to go about this, but seeing as you have six months, if as of right now you have not yet decided a topic, here is a hack for you. Choose something that you are passionate about. I know, real easy. Why didn't I think of that already? <laughs> Choose something that you're passionate about, something that will get you talking, something that will get you just Feeling that ink on paper. So what are you passionate about? What is that thing that gets you talking? What is that topic that when someone mentions it, you are on a roll, just going, going, going? Passion. 
The other thing you could look at is purpose. Okay? Choose something that is aligned to your purpose. I'm not sure if you've already looked at that at the Institute, purpose, strategy, values, but think of your book as a strategy towards achieving your purpose. So what is your life purpose? Think about that and then look at the book as a medium to achieving that purpose. So say your purpose um, involves reaching out to teenagers. You know, you want to empower teenagers, help them be more and more confident about them themselves, maybe help them find their identity and purpose and all that. So why not write a book about that? Why not write a book on that topic? It feeds right into your purpose. See, this book is not just a school assignment, okay? Um, usually, I do editing as well, and specifically for students who are coming from the institute, I have a mini interview, a set of questions that I ask them. And one of the questions I ask is, if you, for any reason, do not graduate from the institute, will you still write this book? This is important. I do not want to waste time on work which is mediocre. I do not want to waste time on work written for the sake of getting grades. And guess what? Neither do your readers. Okay? So give it your best shot. Let it matter to you. Your book has the potential to improve the lives of countless people long after you're gone. So make it count. Okay? So let's recap. Choosing a topic. What are we looking at? How can I choose a topic? Like someone save me, give me a topic right now. This is how you do it. Find something that you are passionate about. As opposed to something that sounds smart or is easier to write about. Number two, consider this book as one of the strategies to achieving your purpose. Choose a topic that is aligned to your purpose. Okay? Are you happy? Do you feel like you can choose that topic and run with it? Great. Let's get to the second hack. Now, this next hack is for you who chose the topic, started on the book with so much gusto, and then somehow you found that you were stuck. A friend of mine, actually, who's in the room right now helping me out with this, falls in this category. Mm. This is my favorite hack because it deals with that terrible phrase, writer's block. You know what you want to write about, and yet you still have a white page staring at you. You have a book structure with beautifully crafted chapters, but somehow you are stuck. This hack, ladies and gentlemen, drum rolls, do, 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 is called outlining. I know it's such a boring name for a fierce point, right? But that could be because the process of outlining is not fun at all, but it will save your behind. Okay, so what is an outline? Think of it as a table of contents. Okay, table of contents. Let's see, do I have a book here? I do have a book. This is The Emotionally Healthy Leader by Pete Scazzaro, one of my favorite, favorite books. So you'll notice that at the beginning, in the first few pages of a book, there is something called a table of contents, okay? So in this book, Pete has face your shadow, lead out of your marriage, slow down for loving union, chapter, 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 up to like chapter nine, okay? So that's a table of contents. Now when you're writing an outline, and I lean in because this is, this, this, you're going to find this helpful. When you're writing an outline, this is how you do it. I'm going to tell you how to do it, and then I can tell you the benefits of doing this. Sit down. Structure the book. Write down, these are the table of contents. These are the chapters that I'm going to address. Remember, you have already chosen a topic based on something that you are passionate about, 
you have chosen a topic that is aligned to your purpose, you are made for this, yeah? So you're going to sit down and write down the chapters, okay? Chapter one, if we're still going back um, by the example of our friend whose purpose has to do with empowering teenagers, yeah? So let's say chapter one is, why am I here? You know, chapter two, finding your giftings and all that. So you do that all the way to chapter number eight or nine or 12 chapters, yeah? Then you are going to go back to each chapter and structure it. That is not too difficult. Now, when we're in school, we're taught that if we're writing something, it has to have an introduction, a body, and a, that's right, conclusion. So go back to chapter one, why am I here? And put introduction, body, conclusion. Introduction. How do you want to start this chapter off? Do you want to start it with a story? Do you want to start it with a Bible verse? Do you want to start it with a quote from a favorite leader of yours? Okay, so think through that. And as you are writing the introduction, avoid, or any part of the outline, avoid being vague. Avoid writing something like, share a story on how I discovered my purpose. That's not helpful. That's not going to help you when it's time to write. That will give you writer's block. What you want to do is share the story of how I found out my purpose. Hyphen. I was sitting at the park bench and then I met Tom and Tom told me blah, 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 blah. Full stop. So you elaborate on whichever point you make. Whichever bullet point you make, you make sure you elaborate and then you don't stop there. You go all the way. How is this introduction going to get into the body of your chapter? Because maybe the introduction, think of it as the hook to the chapter, yeah? So then you're flowing into the body where you're going to now speak to the person and ask them questions. Do you ever feel lost? Do you ever feel like you do not matter? And then you give them, think of the body as a place where you're asking questions and giving maybe solutions, giving your own experiences. And I want you to define them, okay? I want you to elaborate on them. If a book has about eight chapters, it's likely that your outline will be about five pages. I say that so that you can understand the scope that the outline really cannot be a page. That's a table of contents. The outline is you going in depth. This is the time for you to think, how do I want this book to flow? How is the body now flowing into the conclusion? What's the takeaway? How, how am I calling this person to action? Or what am I leaving them meditating on now that this chapter is done? And then how is this chapter connecting into the next one? So that's the outline. Why it's very important, this is why. One of the hindrances to writing and writing fast is thinking as you write. I know. Shouldn't we be thinking as we write? No, because thinking involves pausing and you do not want to pause. You want to write, you want to flow. Now the outline is your muse. Mm -hmm. Because it has nothing to do with the feelings. You have your outline, it's ready, it's set, and when it's time to write, you are going like a horse at the races. That's what's happening with the outline. So the outline is going to help you remove all those pauses, remove that writer's block. When I'm writing um, a book or a piece, I write within the outline, okay? So when the outline is done and it's time for me to write my first draft, I get open the document with the outline. I save it as the title of the book, first draft, and then I'm going through the stories. And what I'm doing now 
is just fleshing them out, you know. I'm elaborating on that story at the park where Tom came and talked to me about purpose. That's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm elaborating on those, on those points that I've made concerning how to answer those questions about purpose, going by the analogy that we're currently using, okay? So outlining is going to save you from being stuck. This is the thing that I've found working with writers. They do not want to outline. They want to coast through that part. They want to make like a flimsy outline and, you know, uh, I think it's enough. It's not. Do the hard work at the outline phase. And when it's time to write, I'm telling you, you can write for as short a time as 30 days. You can be done with that book. All 35,000 words of them by outlining. I'd like to encourage you, even as you hear all this, because we have such a short time together, that for everything that you have had, purpose, the outlining phase, that you go back and, and, and search how other writers are doing it. And, you know, um, some of the websites could offer you writing templates in terms of the outline, you know? Something just to, to get your juices going, because sometimes it's so hard when you can't see what it is the person is talking about. Yeah, are you going to do that? Great, great. I'm going to ask that if you had already started writing without an outline, pause, go back, work on that outline and then resume. It's really, really going to help your writing journey. It really is. Okay, now we're gonna go to the last hack. Are you guys ready for that? The last hack. The last hack. Because to recap, we have looked at our friend who's still trying to choose a topic. They don't have, they have that's the, the, the idea phase, you know. Now we've looked at our friend who has started writing but feels stuck. It's like, I have the content, but then I have just, I'm looking at my word count and I have 3,000 words, but I've been writing and I'm a serious student. It's not you, my friend. It's not you, <laughs> it's the outline, so work on the outline. We're going to now look at the last point which all of us will go through at some point as we're writing. I do go through this myself. Um, I, just, I just published a book uh, two weeks ago, a collection of poetry. I'm currently working on uh, another book, a non-fiction, and I'm telling you there are times when you just do not feel like writing. So the hack is stick with it. Yes. <laughs> See, writing a book is not really as hard as you think, but it is as hard as you think. I was right, working with, uh, with an author recently and he kept saying, I'm so much better at speaking than I am at writing. He kept saying that, you know. And he's like, I wish there was a way of doing this. I've spoken on this topic, la la la. But writing is so hard. And so then we had to go through a session where I should have been coaching this person on writing the book. But I was giving the person words of affirmation. Because until they bypass that thing in their mind, they, they were not going to be able to write. Until you bypass the thing in your mind that's saying, ah, some people are oh, they are born writers. Oh, some people are so good at writing. I'm not creative. I don't have words. I have nothing to say. Then that's what's going to come of that. Okay? So I thought I should throw that in. Determine in your heart that you are going to get this done. Okay? Set a timeline. I was talking to uh, another friend who was in the room right now, actually, and, and I was asking him. So he has been talking about writing, la, la, la. And then I told him, so, so when are you going to write that book? Finally, when are you going to write it? He's like, I'm writing that book this year. I'm like, cool. So when are you writing it this year? Mm, by November. I'm like, by November? 
By November, that's not like a date. That's by November, that's not a date, that's like some day, and it's not on the calendar, okay? So set a timeline. Well, in the end, uh, this person is now going to, has started working on their book. So I need you to set a timeline. I need you to not think, okay, when does the institute need the books? When am I required to hand in the book? No, you don't want to work like that. You want to set a goal. You want to set a specific date that by 22nd June, I will be done with this draft, okay? So, John Maxwell says that anything that is worth doing is uphill. It's going to be uphill. But how do you eat an elephant? That's right, piece by piece. So go about this process systematically. This is how you stick with it. Do you know your writing speed? What word count are you targeting for your book? Do you have a writing schedule? How many words will you need to write per day for how many days in order to hit your writing target? Yeah? Ah, you might think, oh, I'm a free spirit. I don't want to feel constrained or limited by schedules and targets and timelines. Well, free spirit, you have work to do. And it will need to be done whether you feel like it or not. You're going to wake up on some days and not feel like writing. Even for the person who's writing something that you're passionate about. You're going to wake up some days and be like, I do not want to see that book ever again i do not want to hear anything on that topic so what's going to save you intentionality and discipline the questions that i've asked earlier are not rhetorical i need you to answer them so i need you to find out what is your writing speed an easy way to do that is well write an article or a blog and time yourself as you write it Time yourself and see how many words do you get in, let's say in 30 minutes, and use that to determine the amount of words that you write per hour. Two hours, I usually use an hour. Okay, so then you find out I write maybe 600 words per hour, or I write 1,000 words per hour. And then think of that in regard to the total target word count that you want to have. How many words do the books in the genre that you're considering writing usually have? 40,000, 20,000, 60,000. I'm sure the Institute has set a target, has set a requirement for the size of the books that you're writing. So you have to put that into consideration as well. And then from that, get a daily word count. Okay, so if I'm writing a book for 30,000 words, and my speed is a thousand words per day, then if I have done my outline and all I'm doing in the writing phase is writing, not thinking, it will take me 30 days to finish the book. It sounds both simple and impossible, doesn't it? But I've seen it work. I've seen it work. So, craft a writing schedule. It's not going to happen haphazardly. It's not going to be that, oh, today I feel like writing, so I wrote 3,000 words. And then, oh, I don't feel like writing for the next two weeks. Craft a writing schedule. When is the best time for you? Is it morning? Is it evening? Night time? Is it at 1 p.m.? Okay? So whatever the time is, craft the time, set the space, and get writing. Now, the difference, and there can be a difference, between you and everyone in the world who is dreaming about being a bestseller and writing a book and having them introduced as author is that you are actually going to publish your book, right? I hope so. So, that's our communication for today. And I hope that it has got you thinking. I hope that you have found it helpful. I look forward to hearing from you. Questions on this, specific questions, okay? Not generic, but like 
from the work that you're doing if you have something or if you're like I've tried that but somehow it has not worked um, I'm ready to answer such questions I'll address something else just before we close for you to be able to pour yourself into writing that book you'll need to believe that it matters you'll need to be assured that you have something to say something that can change the world something that can improve not just a life but millions of lives you'll need to be assured and certain that there's someone some people a group of people a nation perhaps that is waiting to hear what you have to say and that should spur you on so for some of you it's not the external obstacles it's not a lack of discipline that's keeping you from writing but it's a hard thing you do not believe in what you're saying you do not believe that you're an expert but you do not have to be an expert to change your life you just have to be willing so be willing let god use your experiences let god use your voice let God use your obedience to reach the many people who have been waiting for this book. Okay? Great. I am cheering you guys on. You know that I am. Roxy saying bye-bye. And hopefully I will be getting some questions, some people seeking clarification. I am so eager to help you birth that book. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you again, everyone at the Fearless Institute. Thank you so much for having me and for giving me this opportunity to talk to these amazing fearless students. Okay. Cheerio.